For a while now, if you wanted entry into the luxury car world, your choices were limited to SUVs, but then the 2 Series changed that, and now the A-Class is here to give it competition. Are they worth picking over similarly priced luxury SUVs? Can they hold your attention? Are they sporty enough? Are they comfortable enough? That's what we're going to find out. There's not much between the two in their overall footprint, with the BMW being marginally wider with its wing mirrors in place, a difference you can actually tell while looking in them. The Merc's mirrors are tiny. The Merc has the advantage in wheelbase though, and you can also sort of tell that, but we'll get to cabin space later. More importantly, the BMW is clearly more extroverted in its styling, though I'm not particularly a fan of some of the slightly overdone elements. The A-Class is pegged as the world's most aerodynamically efficient production sedan, and it does look lithe and smooth with a classy single line cutting through from front to rear. Pity then that its colour options of three shades of grey or silver are complemented by a black, a white and a blue, where the 2 Series extroverted tendencies also carry over to a much more lively colour palette. The A-Class thus falls into the trap of being a little inconspicuous though it's classically more good looking. 2 Series, especially in a brighter shade, has oodles more road presence with a fastback type roofline and wide squat rear. Plus, the exhaust exits are real, not just for show as in the A-Class. The top variant 2 Series weighs an M Sport package which certainly helps its youthful appeal and ultimately it comes down to that exactly. We're not sure it'll age particularly gracefully, but it certainly has presence. Here's where the A-Class plays its trump card. It's got all the character of larger Mercedes in here, with the twin large touchscreens doubling up for infotainment and instrumentation, though they are a size smaller than the flagship MBUX screen. The wood trim is tasteful and expensive looking, and the top half of the cabin feels very well made. Some lower plastics, not as much, and in fact are beaten by the overall impeccable quality of the 2 Series. You sit just a little higher in the 2 Series, or perhaps it's the rising window line that gives you that impression, though the overall dash is a bit higher in the Mercedes, and coupled with the slightly smaller windows give the impression that you're a little more hemmed in. That said, the sun visors in the A-Class are too small to bring any meaningful sun protection, while the BMW is far more useful in that regard. Despite the low hip point in the A-Class, it is a more comfortable rear seat for starters. I've actually got headroom even though it's not a lot. Uh, the minus side is that your under thigh support isn't too great and there isn't a lot of space under the front seat for you to shove your feet. My seat is set to my driving position so it's all the way down. But if you can find a happy compromise where it's a little higher up, this can become a lot more comfortable where you can actually stretch your feet out. I really do wish both these cars did come with retractable sun blinds. They shouldn't really be making you step up to the next car in the range for stuff like that. If you're tall or will regularly have passengers, look no further than the A-Class because as we'll see, the 2 Series with its swooping roofline makes some compromises. So the biggest downside of the 2 Series is actually just how much space it has in the rear of the cabin and it could be a massive deal breaker for some. For me, for example, I just don't fit. If I'm sat right up against the, the back of the seat, my head touches the roof and I've barely got enough knee room. There is room for my feet though, so that's a good thing. But yeah, this is a four-seater and the two people at the back can't be very tall. Both these entry-level sedans are as well-equipped as you'd expect them to be for the price, with the Mercedes coming only in one fully loaded variant and the BMW offering a little more choice in that regard. The BMW also brings the advantage of wireless Apple CarPlay, though as usual Android is ignored. And to be fair to the Mercedes, the BMW has zero connected tech features on board. If one were to really pick them apart with a fine tooth comb, the reverse camera on the BMW is clearer while the Mercedes has a larger panoramic sunroof and better safety tech. Stuff like active brake assist and pre-safe aren't to be relied on solely but they do offer an additional aspect of safety. The 
if we were comparing the petrol variants of these two cars, it might be a little more straightforward to choose between the 1.3 litre engine in the A class and the 2 litre in the 2 series. For the diesels, it's a closer game with both having 2 litre capacities, though in the A class, the otherwise excellent OM654 is detuned and is quite a bit down on paper in terms of specs. First thing that you'll notice about the A-Class is that its diesel engine doesn't feel quite as refined as the same diesel engine that's in other Mercedes-Benz cars. Now, whether that's down to a lack of NVH material or whether that's down to the tuning, we'll never know. You feel a lot less short change in the BMW because this 2.0-litre diesel engine isn't the same spec as it is in BMW's larger cars. So you get the full power, you get the full torque, and in this diminutive package, it really does make it feel like it's got quite a lot of pork. It's funny, in a lot of ways, the A-Class does feel like a proper Mercedes, but again, the NVH characteristics let it down a little bit, but you're not going to feel that in the BMW does feel very refined and very smooth. There's absolutely no vibrations that come into the cabin. And the steering feel is just another massive part of how this small 2 Series feels like a big BMW. Atypical of the brand's larger offerings, both these sedans aren't rear-wheel drive, with the power going to the front wheels, which really shouldn't be a deciding factor for most buyers. Both also have 8-speed gearboxes with the Mercedes boasting a new DCT while the BMW gets a torque converter. So the thing is, this gearbox doesn't exactly feel very intuitive. It's not as intuitive as the 9G Tronic, for example. You might find that apparent when you're climbing a flyover and you find the gearbox hunting for a gear. Now, it's also apparent in low-speed traffic where between first and second gearbox just can't seem to take a decision. That being said, at highway speeds, the issues largely sort themselves out and it's all good going. Despite being a DCT, the, the kickdowns aren't the quickest and that's apparent in our testing. What you will feel is that the engine does sound a little gruff under acceleration. Now, I know a lot of people will look at the spec sheet and say, hey, the Mercedes has an 8-speed DCT. That has to be better than an 8-speed torque converter. But that's not quite the case. In fact, this gearbox is so well-tuned to this engine that the entire thing just comes together as a much more sophisticated pathway. Continuing that theme, the Mercedes might seem like it has the upper hand on paper in terms of how wide the power band actually is, but on the road, the 2 Series really does feel like it has nicely spaced out gears where third and fourth, especially if you're in a twisty section, just feel great. In fact, even in the city, when you're getting off the starting line, it just feels a lot more natural where the car knows exactly which gear you need to be in. If you were to take manual control, you'll likely find that the gearbox, even though it's a torque converter, has shifts that are actually quicker than the a classes. That difference shows up in our performance testing, especially our roll-on test, where the gap between the Mercedes and the BMW grows as speeds rise. But given that the Mercedes is down on par and torque, the gap in outright acceleration isn't huge. And the payoff at the fuel pump certainly may be worth it. The Mercedes has stellar fuel efficiency, though the BMW isn't poor by any stretch, it really doesn't match up. But what the A-Class surprisingly gets very right, despite its relatively simple suspension setup, is its ride quality. It really feels like it's been borrowed from the larger Mercs. Granted, it does ride on 17-inch wheels with uh, much higher profile tyres than the BMW, but it rounds off edges on the road, it runs off uh, road imperfections so, so brilliantly 
literally makes you wonder just what could have been offered with air suspension. Though another side is, uh, if it did have air suspension, chances are it would have had that typical air suspension quality where you feel a little thud as it goes over sharp joints and this doesn't do that. So it's actually all the better for it. Just to elucidate on that ride quality aspect of the A-Class, it comes very close to offering that magic carpet-like ride quality. You really do feel the wheels rolling over imperfections and just seemingly flattening them out. So whether it's cat size that you're running over or undulations in the road, it's all pretty good. However, at high triple digit speeds, the fact that the suspension's a little soft can introduce a little bit of a bobbing motion into the car and things really aren't helped by the fact that the steering does feel quite dull and quite lifeless. Don't get me wrong, you do get a good sense of confidence as you're driving at triple digit speeds. It's just that you don't really feel the confidence to stay on the throttle if you see an undulation coming up ahead. A-Class, though it's softly sprung, doesn't drop back on its suspension over speed breakers, something that larger cars on A suspension do tend to do. The 2 Series in its M Sport trim gets larger wheels and run flat tyres with barely any sidewall to them. But don't discount its ride quality just yet. So we've established that the 2 Series is clearly the driver's car and that shouldn't take too many people by surprise. But what's really surprising is that this car with the M Sport package and those low profile tyres and those 18 inch wheels, it rides surprisingly close to the A Class in terms of overall comfort. It's only at really low speeds that you feel the slight crashiness that this setup has over the A Class. For someone like me who likes their car to have a certain amount of directness, uh, doesn't mind a firm ride. The, the 2 Series really ticks all the right boxes, but I think for most people, the way the A-Class is set up would be much more enjoyable. Both cars do struggle over large speed breakers unless you slow to a crawl, with the softer sprung A-Class seeming to scrape its underbody more often, especially with passengers in the car. I do like a bit of heft to my steering, but for most people, the A-Class would be the better choice, especially given just how easy it is to drive in the city. The steering is light and breezy and it really makes the A-Class shrink around you. you. Given how much rear legroom it's got and the fact that it says limousine in the title, this car feels a lot smaller than its name would suggest. And that's purely down to the fact that the steering just feels so light. Of course, as a result, handling really isn't enthusiastic. But that's okay because this diesel A-Class does comfort so well. We know that not everyone appreciates a heavy steering, but for those who do, you will like the directness that the 2 Series steering has. The A-Class should also seem more approachable to most with a standard 8-year warranty on the engine and gearbox. BMW also offers flexible warranties from 3 years to 10 and both manufacturers seem to have gone out of their way to lure you in with finance options, assured buybacks and service and repair packages that should suit your wallet. At around Rs 50 lakh on road, both these sedans come off as seemingly expensive though. In the BMW, the lack of rear seat space is a real worry despite it ticking the same boxes as larger BMWs in nearly every other metric. It's when you consider the overall experience you're getting that the Mercedes pulls out ahead with better comfort, more flashy luxury and a quiet air of what seems like confidence. The hallmark of a large Mercedes. And in the case of the A-Class, it does indeed seem well-founded. Mm -hmm.